Welcome to Hard Talk with me, Zainab Badawi. Brazil is South America's biggest and most populous country and should be a key force on the global scene. But instead, its president, Dilma Rousseff, finds herself battling for political survival. She could be impeached over alleged economic mismanagement that has led to widespread corruption at the state level. And Brazil could be spiraling into the worst economic recession for decades. My guest is the Brazilian politician Celso Amorim, who has served the last three presidents of Brazil, first as a long-time foreign minister and then as defense minister until January this year. Is Brazil teetering on the brink of a major political and economic crisis? Celso Amarim, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you very much. Now, you really are a veteran Brazilian politician. You had nearly a decade as foreign minister, and then for the last three years, you were defence minister and st until you left the cabinet in January. Were you, in a sense, deserting a sinking ship? <laughs> I didn't see it that way at all. Actually, nobody saw it that way. I think the crisis was much bigger than everyone thought. Uh, I was just... I had been almost 13 years for, as a minister, as a cabinet minister, I think it was enough. Hmm. Well, I ask you whether you're deserting a sinking ship because um, a year ago, Dilma Rousseff, the president, wins re-election. And now we see her approval ratings are so low, only about 8% of the Brazilian people think that she's up to the job. What went wrong? Well, Brazilians are very passionate, so the changes are very, sometimes are very extreme. But I would say that uh, we had a couple of things that, uh, two or three things that really uh, influenced that. Of course, a, a recession, which is much bigger than we thought it could be, uh, partly because uh, we, well, all, all people who are in government have a certain doses of wishful thinking, and we thought things would improve in international markets, which they didn't especially China, which has been... Sure. Come we'll on. come to the economics in a minute, okay. but on the politics, the political well, side, she's the, battling well, for survival. Well, I think the, the, I, have, uh, I don't have any doubt that she'll continue to be president of Brazil. I think it's very important institutionally that's kept that way. She was elected, after all, in a clean and fair election. It was considered by everyone like that. So I, I hope she'll stay. But, but of what, course, there are difficulties. OK, let's just look at one of those difficulties. She is already under investigation for allegedly cooking the books. Uh, there's $27 billion of uh, public spending that uh, hasn't been properly accounted for. Brazil's federal watchdog, the TCU, rejected her public accounts of 2014. And the, the suggestion is that perhaps there was an idea of making the economic situation look a bit rosier than it really was in order to secure her re-election. Well, I'm, I'm not an economic specialist, I think. I mean, I'm, I cannot uh, really judge this kind of thing. Uh, but I, it, it's very important. It's not, this is not a scandal in the sense that there was any fraud or anything like that. Uh, there is a, a view by the, the TCU, the, it's a kind of accounting office, uh, uh, which uh, thought that this is improper. Well, it's up to the Congress to judge now. Yeah, but... Because <laughs> the, the, it, it's, re, it's really... Well, it was... $27 it, the, billion? Dollars. Well, it, it was not money taken for somewhere. It was the, the, basically what it happened. It was uh, lending from uh, official banks to the Treasury. That's what I understand it, it, it happened. It wasn't properly accounted for that apparently the government this is the allegation, hid liabilities for social programs on the books of state banks rather than yeah. funding them directly from the budget. And indeed, uh, the former president, Luda da Silva, has come to President Rousseff's defense by saying that that was done in order to protect very important welfare programs like Bolsa Familia, which is social yes. well, welfare spending yes, for poorer yes, families. Yes. It's the largest uh, program in the world. And it's greatly admired transfer, and so, so on. Yes, yes. Yeah, but that's not the point. The fact is, as Sergio Prata from the uh, business school the FGV Business School in Rio says this will definitely lead to an impeachment process. Well, that's his opinion. I mean, that's the Congress that has to, to give it. The accounting office it has a, a, a more important name in Brazil. It's called the Court of, Ac Court of Accountancy or yeah, something like it's that. It's the Federal Audit Court. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, but uh, it, it's really an advisory body. It gives its opinion to the Congress and it's up to the Congress to judge. And I, I don't, okay. well, my personal opinion is that 
it, that won't happen. But I don't what know. It's uh, up to the Congress to make the final judgment. All right. Second um, big problem for Dilma Rousseff, then Brazil's election watchdog, the TSE this time, has uh, opened an investigation into alleged illegal funding of her 2014 election campaign. Well, again, it's not for me to, to, to speak about something that's under justice uh, scrutiny, so to say. Uh, I, I cannot judge. I personally don't think there was anything irregular, but I don't, I don't know. I was not involved in, the, in, this, in, the, in, in, the, in uh, collecting money for sure, the bank no. or anything like that. So, but, uh, uh, and I'm sure that uh, Dilma is a very honest uh, woman. I have to say, she denies any wrongdoing in any yes, of the yes, allegations. Yes, I'm making she that denies. clear. I firmly believe, yeah. and I think the Brazilian people firmly believes, they might not be happy with the situation as it is because, of course, uh, nobody likes unemployment, no, nobody likes the risk of, of an inflation and of a recession. And these are true things that have been tackled. But I, I, I don't think the other accusations will hold Honestly, I you don't. really don't, because we've seen lots of public well, disaffection. You know, it's, it, it, we've it, it, seen people the trying to attack from every, every, every. You know, people. You have to see. This is a Brazilian government, uh, uh, Dilma, who followed Lula, and it's it means 12 years in power of the Workers' Party in Brazil, which is a party that's uh, 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 geared to, toward social change and especially. To, to attacking the main problem of Brazil. You have been there, you know, which is inequality. And it did. And I think that creates a lot of resistance and a, lo a lot of reaction. So uh, I, I, when you see the attacks, they came from all sides. There is the oil scandal. Well, I, I'll come uh, to yeah, that yeah, one, actually. Uh, I, I Thank you for raising Dilma, that one. Celso no, Amarin, Dilma. thank you for raising that one, because that's the third scandal I was ah, going to okay. come to. But I don't She's think Dilma personally plate. is accused of no, anything. No, I'm not, but the fact is... So these then are when they cannot well. get her in the, in, the, in the oil, they try okay, the, the, let me the, mention the TCU, the oil one, then. and then okay. they, when they can't get... Or the, that's not enough, they okay. move to another thing. Let's say what the oil one is. More than $2 billion in kickbacks at the state oil company, uh, the state-owned oil company Petrobras yes. has been making the headlines all over the yes. place. Dozens of corporate executives and politicians from the ruler's working party and its allies jailed. And the fact is, very even good that though, Brazil has a very much free press, and all these things oh, well, yeah, come to yeah. light. Yeah, well, and sometimes also, yes, and also the international press. We've all been yeah, following well, these scandals yes. at Petrobras. But the fact of the matter is, Dilma Rousseff, under President Lula, was the energy minister from 2003 until 2005, and then. Therefore, she was not the chairperson of Petrobras, and this happened on her watch. So even though she is not personally guilty, as you're saying, she presided over this kind of mismanagement. Well, there She's are many things that her. happen that people don't know behind, uh, be below your level of policy decision. Uh, I don't know how Petrobras works precisely, because I've never been to the, any, in any board of any, of any company except the Film Institute long ago. Uh, so I don't know really what they, how they do the right. decisions, but I can, I can be sure that, if, because I know Dilma personally, and I know how severe she is with any, any suspicion of anything wrong, not only on, on, on a scandal like that, but even in, in things that others might okay. consider minor, she was always very severe. Well, why but the fact should, is, there well, are, it, it, it's regrettable. I have no doubt about all right, that. But the fact is, there are now congressmen from several parties um, openly looking at the benefits mm -hmm. of impeaching the president. president. And uh, I want to ask you very simply: Do you believe she can survive? She says she won't resign. That's what she has said in an interview. Uh, can she survive? I'm sure she will survive. I'm sure she will because uh, you know that's the Brazilian institutions have to be preserved. She was elected in a, fair, a, fair, a difficult election, so there are many mutual accusations, so it mm. was not, a, let us say, nice to look but at. But can she govern? Can she govern when, if there's a protracted, lengthy investigation uh, process but the, going on? the investigation on, is not on her. Feature. The investigation... But it's happening the, at this well, time Well, it's difficult. Her. It's a big test, but she's a courageous uh, woman. As you know, she was tortured during the military dictatorship. Yes, military she was in prison for several years. And she, yeah. she was able to go on. Uh, with her ideas and uh, with her uh, fight for democracy and so on. So I, I believe on her power of resistance, so to say, and I believe on her honesty. I don't work for her anymore. Huh? You have to I know take you that into account. So it's only I'm, few... speaking, I'm an independent. <laughs> I know, but you, were in, you are a member of the... Free uh, the radical work. kind of person. Yeah, but you are a member of the Workers' Party. You know, yes, the PT. well, I am a member, yes. Yeah. I affiliated towards party. the end of the government of President Lula because I didn't know what I was going to do. Yeah. So you can't and distance I... yourself that much, Celso Amarim, but... Okay. okay, you mentioned the people of Brazil and how Brazil, of 
course, was always synonymous with huge gap between rich and poor, one Absolutely. of the worst levels yes. of inequality in the world, and it still is pretty high. And the Workers' Party came in saying, you know, we're going to try to be the voice of the poor. And that was the first time that the Gini indicator, uh, everyone the about, Gini coefficient, yeah, coefficient yeah. Yeah. Uh, improved in Brazil. Sure, first time in our history, because we had the country with inflation, the country without inflation, right. the country with growth, the country without growth. But the, the only thing that increased always was inequality. Okay, and, that's, and we changed that thing. Then. Well, you're making it better, and that's why President Lula was a, a popular president, re-elected, and that's why his protégé, Dilma Rousseff, was elected in 2010 first time, and then re-elected in 2014. But the fact of the matter is, the people who voted the Workers' Party into power are really unhappy now. We've seen hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people marching on the streets last year, this year. I'll give you one example. Sao Paulo, a 69-year-old retired woman, Elsa Alves, marching along saying, I'm I'm worried about rising inflation. I'm spending more than half of my retirement income in the supermarket buying food and now electricity. Conditions of life have gone downhill. Well, it is. Well, I don't know if they have gone downhill, but well, they she have worse. Has is she wrong? Oh, she said, of course. I'm, I'm not. Uh, She's just one claiming of, what one she of said. Many. No, no. It, it is a hard. It's a hard time that we're going through. I have no doubt about that, but I'm sure that we go out of that, and I have no doubt about that. And when we go out, anyway, we'll have a country that is fairer, in which more people have opportunities. If you look even, if I might say, even to the color of the people who complain, for instance, when, you, when university funds are, are retained, you see that's another country. 20 years ago, uh, I, 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 well, I, uh, let me just Okay, let that. me just ask you about the economics, yeah. though, because again, you say things will get better, but you know now people are saying that Brazil is facing the worst recession since the 1930s. Unemployment, 10% and rising. Inflation, about 7%. Uh, sorry, inflation 10% and oh, rising, yeah. Yeah, these are maybe, the figures, yeah. and unemployment increasing, now it's around 7.6%. GDP is expected to shrink by nearly 3% this year. Junk status for some of the uh, credit ratings of Brazil by, for instance, Standard & Poor's. The picture, the outlook is very, very bleak. Well, we are accustomed to fight difficulties and to go through them. You know, we, we, and we, we went through many more. I think Brazil had three big problems and three big deficits. One was a democracy deficit, and that was surely gone. I mean, you have the justice working very clearly and very freely. Uh, the accusations you mentioned are a proof of that. You have, uh, uh, you have then economic stability which came, now it's in a difficult situation, but it's not the inflation that you used to have of, of no. 60, 80 percent a year. That's how I grew up, actually, until the age of 50. So I think this is, this is, this is under control, and I think will be under control, probably to go down last year. Exports are already increasing because the, the, rate, the exchange rate is coming to a more realistic. I think we suffered to some extent what people call the Dutch disease. You know, we had a, a lot of, uh, there was a lot of purchase of our products, price of commodities were high, and we wrongly, I agree, we wrongly believed that we, that would last forever. So we're paying for that. So the wishful, slowdown in China. We're paying that for the, yeah. that wishful thinking, but I don't think it will be a disaster. So and, this, and it's a more equal country, a country in which Everyone can speak, not only the rich, but also the poor. Not, I'm not distracting from some of the economic benefits yeah, that have yeah, accrued to the people. Together. Yeah, but just looking at the here and now and the future, the economic slowdown in China has meant that there's weakened demand for Brazil's commodities, Absolutely. and we know that's that true. you yeah. are still very much an economy that's based on, on commodities, yeah, as you say, unfortunately. And so when you look at the government now, its expenditure is outpacing what it's getting in return, and this is causing huge, huge problems for the Well, that's the true, government. and I think there, there is a, the attention of the focus of the attention of the government is precisely on that point, and of course this creates uh, sometimes further difficulties in the short run, because of course anywhere in the world when you have a strict fiscal uh, policy uh, and uh, high interest rates, well, you can discuss if interest rates could be lowered a little bit. I'm not an economist myself, no. but anyway, if credit could become a little easier so that economy would pick up. Uh, but anyway, these are difficult times. No, but, no yeah, doubt but about you're that. looking at but austerity we, we are measures. doing what we have to do. But are you doing what well, you have to do? She's doing what we should do. Well, have she's to do. trying to, isn't she? She mm. had this massive cabinet reshuffle in January, and uh, Joachim Levy has come in as the finance minister. He is contemplating tax increases and also spending cuts, but his moves are being resisted by the president's own 
members of the president's own party, the Workers' Party, because mm. they're saying, look, we want to go in the opposite direction. We don't want austerity measures. Oh, I think the party understands the needs for fiscal austerity. Of course, when it comes to, to choosing what are the, the, the expenditures that will cut, it is important to keep the social programs. Uh, that's an essential aspect of, of the Workers' Party. And that's, why, uh, that's the reason why they were elected and re-elected uh, for government, because it was the first party that really, ta I'm not saying that the previous governments didn't have social programs, well they had, mm. even the military had, government had and of course the democratic governments that followed also had, but it was the first government that put the priority in attacking this most important should I say, plague of what of Brazil, which is the inequality. Yeah, but now government expenditure outpaces tax revenue and other forms of government revenue, and the government is trying to do something about it. As I said, Joachim Levy is trying to, but there are voices, influential voices within the Workers' Party. Senator Lindbergh Farias is talking uh, about the plans to rein in unemployment benefits, and he's saying the government shouldn't do this. It's playing with fire. We don't well, want Well, there's always a discussion on where you should, pension should be, or whatever should be. I mean, so, I mean, it's very difficult to maintain. I think the main if I could judge, I'm, again, I'm not, I'm not an economist. But you've been a cabinet no, no, no. minister no, for 13 years. No, I've been a cabinet years. minister, you know, but we yeah. are not a parliamentary regime, so we okay. work in a different way, actually. Nobody, when people didn't meddle so much with foreign policy, and I would not meddle with what other people are doing, but to a large extent, I would say. But uh, I think if there was a mistake, the mistake was that we, there were too many tax cuts well, they were right when they were taken in 2008, 2009, because that's the way to make the economy continue to live. And when everybody was down, Brazil was growing by 7%. So, but I think that is takes probably had to be correct at some stage and it... W and that's what's happening now and there's a great deal of pain for the people, the very constituency of the Workers' Party to the extent that the politi a political scientist in Brazil, Leonard Barreto from the political consultancy group Mosaico says President Dilma Rousseff has drifted away from her party's well, way I, of thinking. All, I, people say that, I don't know if it belongs to the Workers' Party, but the, the mo most people who... No, who, I didn't say he Yeah, did. yeah, but they, 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 yeah. Why, why should he say that? He should speak about his own party, but I don't know... To, who, Party he belongs. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, when you see people who were, uh, were in, the, in big numbers, and, I, I, and I, I don't despise that, that's important, but they were middle class people. You look at them, you look, they were mostly middle class and upper middle class people. Yeah, but I also put it to you earlier on that even those people, the, the, I, the I'm not, I don't deny that the people, so on, people are have been out on no, the streets. No, I don't deny that they are suffering, yeah. but the, these yeah. people who are expressing themselves and asking for her. Okay. Impeachment thing. Most of them, maybe not all, but most of them were middle class. Oh, look, I have to say class. to you, really, just on this to finish this particular point, you know, we've seen banners being carried by people protesting in the streets saying, Brazilians are sick of corruption and Jilma out. Clean the filth. Well, these are the know, banners. The, these aren't know, the middle class no, and the uh, elite. Most of them were okay. middle class and all upper right. class. Can, can I can Bra tell you, I know them. I live, I live in a middle, you know high, upper middle class thousands. neighborhood. All these hundreds myself. of thousands huh? of protesters. Sorry? All these hundreds of thousands of protesters. You know every single one. I can say that, I don't know, I can't okay. count everyone, but looking at the face, at the color, you can say 80% of middle, middle, okay. upper middle class. Given all, middle all this class. then, can Brazil Which is serious, I don't, right. I don't deny okay. anyway, because I have the middle class also has to survive. Have to survive, of yes, course. Yes, of right. course. Given all this, can Brazil really afford to host the Rio Olympics next no, year? It, the cost is $13 billion, 10% well, of the 56 well, stadiums haven't been built I yet. I think the, 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 the Olympic Games will be a great occasion for people to go to Brazil. You know, when we, people are always skeptic about Brazil. When we had the World Cup, it's a very bad memory for us in terms of, dollars. because of the, the game with Germany, as you know. <laughs> but on the other hand, uh, yeah. the World Cup uh, was r ran smoothly, no violence at all. No, nothing that... But did uh, it create lasting business? Because the idea is that it well, didn't. It cost 11 billion and there wasn't well, much of a kind know, of financial dividend. you can't make accounting like that. It's, it's a long-term okay. thing. You know, it's like foreign policy. Right. When you do foreign policy, when we started our trade with India or China or whatever, people say, well, what will gain? I mean, the, the real markets are in Europe, in the United States. But you have to look at the long run. You know, you cannot just be... It's not a tit-for-tat thing. All right, so you bring uh, how Brazil has got relationships with India and trading and so on and so on. 
course you are the B in the BRICS nations, uh, coined uh, in, in 2001-2002 by the former Goldman Sachs uh, economist uh, Jim O'Neill. Now Lord O'Neill, I understand. Lord yeah. O'Neill now, absolutely. He's Maybe been that was the reason, I don't yeah, know. He's been elevated. He had foresight. Okay, and so the R in the BRICS, and that's the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, said recently the five countries illustrate a new multipolar system of international relations. Is that how you see it, that that's a vehicle for Brazil to project its world power? Well, among other things, I mean, I mean, especially in economics, in the economic sphere where the World Bank and the IMF are based on rules which are totally uh, of, of the past. On the, yeah, yeah, the past, the old uh, powers, the quotas. Uh, uh, powers. You have small European countries. I'm not speaking of Britain. It's not small. I mean, really small European countries with quotas that are bigger than those of India and Brazil. You're talking about so, Belgium, bigger uh, than India. Uh, well, voting, vo rights. voting power that's bigger than that doesn't make sense. I mean, uh, when President Bush called the G20 for the first time, they didn't call those countries. They called Brazil, they called in India, mm. and called mm. uh, uh, Russia, and called. Uh, so mm. you know, that's certainly so true. So is it? Is it? You see it as a vehicle for a, a kind of middle power like Brazil to project uh, well, its global yes. image? Well, yeah? it's part, part of it, yes. Yeah. yes. But President it's not only because we yeah. have other things. We have South American integration, which is very important, of course. We keep peace with our neighbors. Which it, seem, it seems like a, something given by God, but it's not. It's given by diplomacy, by hard work, by working oh, yeah, every really day. Are you much of a regional player? There you are, 50% of South America's territory, a population of more than 200 million. And yet, partly because I suppose you're Portuguese speaking and, and the rest of the continent is Spanish, although, of course, I know the languages are similar. But Brazil just seems relatively oh, but, uh, close. And Guyana speaks English, <laughs> and Suriname speaks Dutch. Okay. And they are now our neighbors, but, okay, very but, much so. But, but Brazil seems to be a little bit insular. You know, you don't trade very much, partly because you're not a big trading nation with your neighbors. Oh, that, well, and Brazil was a, was a colony. So our, our, our old trade, basically, was with Europe and the United yeah. States. When we, so well, you're not much of a regional force, really? Well, yes. Mercosul is an important force. That's I mean, the it has, South it American has, it has changed quite a lot the pattern of trade. I believe we are now the, the biggest, maybe after China, but we are probably the biggest uh, market for countries like Uruguay, Paraguay, and Argentina. Uh, maybe China has surpassed us, but that's a different reason altogether. And that's a big change. Mm. Uh, it's still, of course, our bigger trading partners from our point of view are still China, uh, United States and Argentina, but what there was a point that Argentina that was... was what yeah. about South-South cooperation? Because mm. President Lula, I know, made a great deal of the fact mm. about ties between Brazil and Africa, yes. because half of your population is either of African or mixed-race descent. Yes. Biggest African diaspora, biggest African population Something outside Something that you still Nigeria. don't see very well in the Brazilian elite. No, That's you why don't. the inequality I have is to say, so important. Absolutely. But, you know, there we saw Lula, President Lula opening up embassies all over Africa. We saw trade between uh, Africa and Brazilian trade to Africa up from 4.3 billion in 2003 to 28.5 billion in 2013. You do that, but, so President, already give the yeah, but yeah. President, President Rousseff is now going around apparently closing some of these embassies. No, no embassies yeah. closed. But I, know, is, no she's embassy. not well, I'll, I will not. I'll make. I'll not make comments on the uh, on the details of foreign policy or, or diplomacy of, because I have to respect what has been done by, by my successors. Uh, I think. Uh, President Lula was certainly, let us say, more extrovert in yeah. terms of international relations than President Ilne is, uh, but no embassy was closed, and we continue with the same policies. And uh, just now we are having a summit of South America with Arab countries, uh, which was uh, a creation. So uh, she's not going to undo many of President no, no, Lula's foreign policy achievements? No, no, I don't think. No, no, no. I, of course, I believe quantity is also important for, for quality, but I don't think it will And change. relations with the U.S.? interest aligned briefly on that? Well, I would say it went to, uh, they, we established a very good dialogue. Uh, Lula and Bush saw each other several mm -hmm. times, including two visits of, of Bush to Brazil, and I, of course, with Condoleezza Rice, and later with Hillary. We had our disagreements. Uh, as I said, many was the Tehran but you've declaration. you've rebuilt trust. You've rebuilt trust, you think, well, between I think the two? It was never, it okay. was never really uh, at risk, the trust. Uh, we may agree oh. or disagree, but we, I think, we have respect from the United Very States. Very quickly and briefly, Brazil, years of boom behind it, sinking to a new low. No, I think this, if you have to take the long-term line, and the long-term line is a growing one and a rising one. Celso Amarim, thank you very much indeed thank for coming you. on thank Hard Talk. Thank you.